day, Mr. Palmer. How are you, sir? Good day to you, Mr. John. <laughs> I'm trying to do time zone, not important greetings. Um, in I case you, in, in case that triggers you, um, how are you, sir? It's been it's been a hot minute since we talked. It has been, and I'm I'm doing quite well. Thank you for it's asking. Good. It's good. So, what do we got on the on the topics today? We uh, it's, it's a stray dog. It's going to be a stray dog. We uh, we're coming to the end of the year. We can admit that, and and people are. I think people are starting to hibernate. I'm not really sure. But we can't get people to join us. So it's a stray dog. You're stuck with me and Jim, which is, well, I'm happy for it. I don't, I don't consider it to be stuck, but. It, yeah, it's, 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 it's getting into the point where trying to coordinate and schedule is, you know, for a producer, you know, that, you know, the pain of scheduling. So yeah. So today it's just going to be you and I, and I thought what we could do today is I want to do a controller cage match. In the past, we did some like picking our favorites, but today I want to put it in, I want to put the controller platforms into a ring and we're going to fight it out and we're going to, I'm going to keep score and we're going to come up with a winner in 30 minutes or less, 30 30, minutes or less, 30 minutes. What are you? mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. I feel like I've been, (laughs) I feel like, I feel like I've been picked on. Well, we'll never get, we'll never get it under 30 minutes, but then we can dream. Sure. All right. So. Controller cage match it is. So let's 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 outline our per, our um, contestants in our cage match. Sure. What do we got? We got. Uh, looks like we're looking at smart zone. Virtual. So that would be. So we're going to call that the orange corner. Orange corner. Okay. And then you've got Ruckus one. Here two four we'll referred to, corner. and we're going to call that Ruckus R one moving forward, just to make it a little bit easier. And then we've got Unleashed. I don't have a color for Unleashed. How about how about red like your shirt that nobody else can see? Yeah, we'll do the red corner. Okay. So with that said, I guess we'll ring the bell and we'll get started. This should yep. be fun. Ready? Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Love that bell. Okay. So round one. Round one. What We're do you got for us? talk about ease of setup. Ooh, this is a good one. So... Out of the orange corner with with we're gonna we'll go with the virtual smart zone, understanding that there is an appliance. But for this for this battle for this competition, we're gonna go with a virtual smart zone. Um, ease of setup. What do you think, John? If we're doing this on like a scale of one to ten, I'd say this is probably like I don't know, like a five. It's not impossible to set up, but knowing what it's going up against, it's not going to be the easiest of the three. It's got the most That's moving fair. parts. Is is you know, you've got, if you're do- dealing with a home lab, it's really easy. You've got no firewall rules. It's a, you throw it on a nook and it's running. If you're talking about throwing it lab in a corporate environment or production, uh, you'll have firewall rules. You'll have other, you know, if you're dealing with GCE or AWS or anything like that, you're going to have to spin up an instance. There's more moving parts. It's just, that's the reality of it. And then you've got a whole lot of power under the hood of the virtual smart zone. It's just... It's not, I don't want to be daunting about it, but the reality is if you're going to set up a new VSC, you're booking yourself for a couple hours, probably. And I, but you know, but I will say that the first one is always the hardest. I mean, that's true. And, and that's going to be, that's going to be true for the three, our three contenders. The first time you do it is always is a little more, you know, it takes more time, but I think especially with virtual smart zone, once you kind of have done it and you've made all the mistakes um, as you go through the setup of a virtual smart zone, I think once you've done it the first time, you kind of know like, oh, I have to set the number of interfaces, which is when you're doing a high scale controller um, is, is especially true. You know, a lot of people are like, I have to use three interfaces. Well, you don't have to, but you usually end up screwing that. You know, you <laughs> You do that the first time, you screw it up, and then you realize, oh, I got to blow away and start over again. But this time in the setup, I do it this way. I only did so, it a few times. Yes. <laughs> it's, what what there's a there's a comment about uh, TCP is one to one, UDP is one to many, and multicast is you configured it wrong again. So for setting up for setting up a virtual smart zone, there are guides. So if if you're willing to sort of put your ego in check and go read the guide. The guides will walk you through it, and it's not as bad. But I think to your point, when we compare them to our other competitors, um, it, it it does come in last place. So for for this round, I I would give 
I would score, I think you're right, I would score the BSC a five. Up next, we got R1. Now, I'll admit, I haven't done a whole lot with with Ruckus 1. I haven't, I've touched the cloud, I've used the cloud, and Ruckus 1 being the evolution of the cloud product, I will say this about that. In terms of ease of use, in terms of getting it up and running, five minutes, if R, that. R1 cheats, R1 cheats because it's already done. We do the work for you. Yeah. So when you when we talk about the, you know, the ease of setup with, you know, accessing, you know, getting access to the controller, um, adding hardware and doing all the other stuff that you do when you like you first stand something up, R1 is probably the easiest um, and and it's built that way because we do all the work for you. So I would, I would come in and I would give R1 uh, a nine. I mean, it's, I, I'm, I'm really picky. So I'm never going to give anything a 10. So nine is probably the highest I'll ever go. See, I was going to give it a 10, but, but you know, I won't, I won't argue with the nine because it's going to be the best of the group. I'll, how about we go 9.5 on this? There one? you go. I'll put it this way. And this is what popped in my head when we were talking about this of the three. And I don't want to cheat unleashed out of any attention. It's going to get some soon. If I were in a pickle, on a customer site and I needed to get an AP running and just, just AP running. And I had this happen to me a couple of years ago where I needed to get an SSID out to be tested for, I call it QA. Wasn't going to do smart zone. Rock is one or unleash is where it's at because that's up and running really, really fast depending on the requirements. Uh, I mean, it's basically what you, you key in the serial number to the ruckus cloud site. I don't know if our one's a little bit different that used to be ruckus cloud, but it's just like Jim said, we do all the heavy lifting. We do all the heavy lifting for you. Um, it's, it's just incredibly, it's incredibly powerful and incredibly simple. And in your scenario of, Hey, I have, I have to, I have an AP. I need to get it up and running. If you have the ruckus one mobile app, you can literally click it on your phone. You, it opens, you can do an add an AP or an add a switch. You scan the barcode for the serial number. It pulls the serial number up and says, hey, this serial number is going to be associated to your Ruckus One venue. And so then you plug the thing in. And by the time you have everything else built, the AP is called in, it's registered, it does a firmware upgrade, and you can be up and running incredibly fast. Now, this is all dependent on, in your scenario, I have, an, I have access to the internet. I have that, you know, I have an internet connection. So then that works. So it, it is, it's, it's quick, it's easy. Everything is really intuitive and done for you. So which then leaves 9.5 us for Ruckus one, which leaves us with unleashed and mm -hmm. out of the gate, I would say I'd give this a solid 7.5 um, only because, I mean, I could probably go eight. It's not, it's easier than the VSC. It's not as easy as Ruckus one. You do have to do some work, but the, I would say there's not a lot of resistance. It's not if you're if you are somebody who's done home networks before and you've you've configured a home wireless network. The unleashed interface to me, it, it felt very similar to that, and it's incredibly powerful. What you can do with that as well. I'm going to use that saying a lot. I'm going to get in trouble, but it really is. Just, I mean, at the end of the day, what you're getting, you're getting a really solid AP with regardless of what platform you run it on, but you're not losing anything by running it on Ruckus One versus Unleashed versus Smart Zone. It's more about how you want to run them long term. Um, I think is is probably the best way to put it. But I mean I love Unleashed. Um it saved my bacon a couple times. Um it just takes a little bit longer to get running than Ruckus One. So the nice thing about I mean the long part is actually just you have to go get the firmware for Unleashed for your AP model. And then you you web into it using, you know, the IP address that it gets from a DHCP server, which if you're not used to it, trying to figure out, Hey, what IP address did my DHCP server hand out? If you're comfortable with that, you get it in seconds. If you're not, it might take you a little bit longer, but then you have the time of just, uh, cause the, I'll tell you what doing, and uh, I've been doing it a lot over the past couple of weeks, Loading the firmware is about as simple and easy as you can make it. The problem that you have is just the time of it takes to do the firmware upgrade. But once you have that done and you reboots and it comes up and unleashed, there's a wizard that walks you through building everything. So by the time the thing actually reboot, you know, when it, when it, when it does its final unleash configuration stuff, 
the SSID is up and running already. I mean, you pretty much know it's done when you look and you go, oh, look, there's my SSID. So from that end, you know, just simply because of the the effort of having to do the firmware upgrade and the two reboots on it in order to make the AP work at Unleashed, I would give it a seven. So with you saying 7.5 rate, I'm going to go with a 7.5. That's fair. So it looks like round one, I think, is in the books. And yes. round one goes to Ruckus One. Does. Which takes us to round two, the nerd knobs. How configurable right. is the platform? How much uh, effort do you need or not need to get each one of these to be where you want it to be? And are there enough of them? Among other things. So kind of going in the same order. Fighting out of the orange corner. <laughs> for the virtual smart zone. What say you, Mr. Palmer? We'll, we'll flip it. We'll let you give the scores this time first. So for this one, I'm going to put a caveat. We're going to talk about the latest, um, well, the latest as of right now, which is 6.1.2. But 6.1 and 6.1.1 and 6. Those are all, pre- the, the user interface is pretty much the same. So for the amount of nerd knobs you get from the virtual smart zone, I would actually rate that about as high as you can. I, I, I would give that one a 9.5. However, I am going to cut down my score by the, the ease it's smart zone is expert friendly which is cool because it's really kind of especially the virtual uh smart zone high scale is really kind of built for experts so i'm good but i'm gonna knock it down just a little bit and i'm gonna come off my 9.5 for the nerd knobs because there's enough but sometimes even you and I can struggle with trying to find out like, hey, where's my AP registration rules? Where are some of the other things? It takes a little bit of clicking. So I'm going to come in for the virtual smart zone. I'm going to give it a solid eight is where my score for the nerd knobs. Okay. Now, for me, I think I'm scoring this compared to the other two. So I'd actually give it a 10 in the group, but I'll, I'll settle with a nine if you want to go down to an eight. Um, to me, this is the best of the bunch, not to spoil the votes, but... And the reason for that is if you want nerd knobs, this is the platform you deploy from a, from a ruckus controller's perspective. This is everything that we can do, everything that you can tune, whether it's at the controller level, at the zone level, at the AP group level. You've got any bit of granularity that you could possibly want. If you want the granularity, if it doesn't exist anywhere else, it's going to exist in the VSC, especially the high scale, like Jim said. If it doesn't exist there, we don't have it yet or it's not deployed, probably. Um, I'm not PLM, so don't crucify me if I've got that wrong. But it's basically, if you're the enterprise customer and you want to have as much control and flexibility as possible to run anything in the world, you're going high scale. Yes. But... That is, and again, my, and so for feature level, I gave, a, I yeah. gave it a 10. But but to your point, you're, you're, it, it's feature level 10... Um, Ease of use, which is user interfaces is, is our next one, but you do need to know what you're doing. And that that goes to, to, to the point of everything, right? You need to know what you're doing. There's a lot in there. And if you don't know what you're doing and you don't RTFM, you can turn the knobs the wrong way and have unintended consequences and not good unintended consequences. So, you know, be careful. But for those other ones... Maybe you know, we look so, at. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come up a little bit based on your argument, and I'm willing to give the virtual smart zone for the nerd knob round. I'm willing to give that one a nine. That's fair. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, nothing's. I agree with you that it's it should be really hard to get a ten. I only gave it my initial ten based on the competition, but nothing's perfect. And I'm sure people listening are gonna say there's always room for improvement, even with us. But that said, yeah. it's up against two others. So how did Ruckus One and Unleashed later stack up to the nerd knobs? I and you know, we gotta give a little caveat to the Ruckus One platform on this one because it's not necess- it's its primary focus is not the even though it can be used for the Uber high end, you know, I'm I'm a CWNE times three type of person. It can be used for that, but its focus is not as much for that 
as it is sort of, a, it, it's also mixed into the SMBs and to some a little bit smaller ones. So for the nerve knobs, I'm going to give Ruckus one, I'm going to, I'm going to give that one an 8.5. And with the new interface, I'm even going to give like, how hard is it to find them? Once you kind of get over that initial learning curve of, Hey, where does this, you know, is it the venue? Is it the AP? Is it the WLAN um, or the switch? Once you kind of get over that little hump, finding them is actually pretty intuitive. So it's, I don't think it's, it's not quite as good as the virtual smart zone high scale. I, I think you and I agree on that, but for Ruckus one, I would give it an 8.5. And, and you know what? I'm going to be lazy here and I'm going to agree. 8.5 seems fair. Um, admittedly, I don't have as much time in the seat behind uh, Ruckus one as I do with high scale. Um, but having conversations with the product side folks, I, I feel like high scale has a very specific niche. Um, I happen to support a vertical that it, it is really, really good for. That's but, fair. But there are plenty of customers, enterprise to, to SMBs and beyond, that R1 will give you more than ample configurability without, mm -hmm. as Jim said, like, where is it? Is it hard to find? Is it an obscure setting that I've got to do, like, right hand green, left foot yellow to find it? Like, it's <laughs> it's streamlined. Um, and we'll get to some more of that in the user interface because there's there's definitely some to touch on there. But it's it's a very powerful platform, and I think the biggest appeal to me, nerd knobs and otherwise, about Ruckus One, is that it's it's only about a year old. I think I, I think I'm getting the birthday right. Less, less than less a year than old. That. I think it was, it was yeah. officially kind of unleashed. Sorry to steal that thunder. Uh, on the the, the Wi-Fi world, beginning of this year actually in 2023, but it's it's basically getting constantly developed for. Um, and, and that's not to say that the other platforms aren't, but because of the nature of the, the way that that platform comes together in our world, um, it's it's very, I think they, they're doing a very good job of keeping it very uh, up to date more rapidly. I think there's there's a lot more flexibility there, just the nature of the code base and whatnot. Um, I'm sure if we had one of those PLMs on, they would give us the whole rundown of what it is, and maybe that's a, a future episode. But I, I think this is a strong 8.5 and I would say don't sleep on it because honestly, at the end of the day, I've seen, I've seen enterprise, major enterprise customers have this pitched to them and they were very intrigued because I think the, the benefits, what it doesn't require from round one and the fact that you get a lot of what you get from the high scale. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to like about this product and I think you're going to be hearing a lot more about it in the future. And to be fair, and full disclaimer, John and I are CWNEs, and so we really do, you know, the the expert friendly stuff doesn't really bother us. We like we like that, and so we are sort of skewed a little bit in that regard to Smart Zone. But you, I agree with you. Ruckus One is is starting with the work that they've been doing and how it's and how it's coming along. I don't. I think if we were to do this in a year from now, we might actually they might be in a dead heat for this guy for this yeah. category. So, and, and, and the beauty part too, is we, we often see vendors make products for particular, like this is going to be for this cus customer size and this is going to be for this one. And that's going to be for this one. And they, they sort of silo it off. And I think what we've done here is created another platform that you basically could be using either R1 or smart zone. And it's, Pick your poison effectively. And one thing I, I think we kind of, maybe we did touch on it, maybe we didn't. It, it goes back to round one. So Ruckus One is all cloud. You don't have to stand a server up, which is really appealing to a lot of people. It's it's scary to some others. But, and and what we didn't, and I'm going to segue into Unleashed. What we didn't mention with Unleashed is if you have like three Ruckus APs, you have an Unleashed server. Mm -hmm. One of those APs becomes the server. You don't need a server. You don't need a cloud instance. It's a self-contained network which is really, really cool. Um, so a little bit of an extra point for Unleashed. You still didn't win that round, but how does Unleashed stack up on the nerd knobs? So fighting out of the red corner, we have Unleashed. And again, I have to I have to flavor this. I have to color this a little bit with, you know, because of what Unleashed is, it's never going to compete against Ruckus One. It's never going to compete against any smart zone, but it's not meant to. It's not designed to. And so because of that, when we take a look at the nerd knobs and the amount of features that come with Unleashed, I think it's punching well above its weight. I think it's, you know, 
it's it's not that little stripped down TP link type of experience that you can get. You can actually do a ton of stuff with Unleashed. But again, that also kind of hurts it a little bit because people kind of expect a TP link type of experience. But because the features are so much, um, then it 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 sort of skews its score, I think, in this round. I, I don't think from a from a feature perspective, it gets it really high, but because of just I mean, I'm amazed every day at what I learn what else that Unleashed can do. So to give it a number, I'm gonna have to give it actually a 7.5. Um and what but from the and understand from a feature perspective and the nerd knobs for what it is, it's a 10. However, for who ends up using it, sometimes it's a little overwhelming and there's too much in there. And so the ease of use, how hard it is to run it and stuff like that, and the ability to screw up the nerd knobs, I think knocks it down. It's If you are expert friendly, if you spend the time, then that thing is punching well above its weight. And I think it really competes against the other ones. But I'm going to give it a 7.5, John. So I was, I was kind of torn. I was thinking 7.5 or 8. Um, as with R1, it's another product or, or, or controller line, if you will, that I don't have as much time behind. But I will say I, I kind of hold a special place for, for uh, Unleashed. It saved my bacon, as I mentioned before. I had a customer site. I needed to do some testing in the lab. They didn't have a controller that could could reach the lab. It was a very isolated, you know, segmented part of the network. Um, R1 wasn't out at that point in time, um, and cloud wasn't going to cut it uh, just because of the access restrictions and whatnot. So I had a couple APs. Unleashed was the way to go. Um, and to be able to download the code to get it set up, all I needed to do was configure an SSID or two. I think we turned on a couple radios, and that was we were off to the races. So... It's not the sexiest of interfaces, which again, that's I'm cheating. That's round three. Um, I think it gives you enough. And I, I, good, bad, or otherwise, to me, when I popped into that the first time, I'm like, this feels like the old, not that it looks old, but like it feels like the old home networks that I used to maintain. It, it felt kind of more like that. So I think the transition for somebody is probably not that bad. Um, you have enough control to make it work, but if you're a power user, you're going to be probably more frustrated because there's things that you just can't do or can't do as easily. Um, I think that's how I would, how I would kind of put it. So I'd say 7.5. I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue with that. It's, I liked how you said it. It's punching above its weight class. And what the, the, what I would underscore my last comment on this one, uh, SEs and, and, and Jim has it too. Like a lot of the ruckus employees that have to work on this, we get the gear because we need to use it. We, you know, we eat our own dog food. But when the ruckus employees leave and they keep the APs because, you know, they're two generations old or whatever, but they're still running their house, Unleashed is the software they go to. It doesn't have a cost to it. There's no, I don't have to pay for a license. It runs my APs in perpetuity until the APs die or you decide you want to get Wi-Fi 12. Um, it's going to run. So to me, that speaks volumes about what it is capable of. And it's it's just kind of worth throwing out there as a benefit. There's a cost to R1. There's a cost to VSE. There's no cost to Unleashed. So I think whether that lands in the nerd knobs or some other intangibles, I think it's worth mentioning. Um, it does punch above its weight class there. So I'm going to raise my score and give it from a 7.5. and I, I'm comfortable with an 8 on this one. See, this, this is, though, I work in sales. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately. Unfortunately, you know, for, for a nerd knob for round two, this round goes to the VSE. Okay. Well, that leaves us one round, or does it? The user interface. So, user interface. So, John, you want to start us off with, out of the orange corner with the VSC? Sure. Um, again, I'm biased. I think this is a clean interface. Um, when we went to 6.0 code, um, we did do a UI overhaul. Um, and, of course, I got used to 5.2.2. And then as soon as I started to go into 6.0, I was like, whoa. But the neat thing, even though there's a default skin, is you can actually... Uh, change that back to the default 522 old view, legacy view, I think it's called. Um, I like it. I'm used to it. Um, I think with a lot of these, it's something you use on a regular basis. You get used to it. You get comfortable. So I'm trying not to let my familiarity kind of cloud my opinion. Uh, but I think it's a really clean interface. The one thing, and, and Jim alluded to it earlier, um, maybe some of the things are a little bit more buried 
than you'd like, but that's only because there's a lot of options. It goes back to the nerd knobs. That's why it won round two. There's a lot of nerd knobs, so they've got to go somewhere. Um, you know, you can search and, and you can actually set favorites. If there's sections of the, the interface that you're in a lot, you can make it a favorite. It makes it a little bit easier to find. Um, it's the, it's the sort of the, the side effect of having a very, very feature rich controller platform. Um, so for a score, I'll go an eight. I think it's good. Um, but it's not the, to me, it's not the best in this round. Um, you know, I kind of like the VSC interface. I agree that, you know, it was a little bit of an extra learning curve to get from um, the, from the, when it went from the 5.2 to the 6.0. So there was a little bit of that curve. So in that regard, I'm going to, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, and part of the problem is the competitors in this round really kind of come out swinging. And so, I gotta, I gotta have to separate that out of my mind. And for this round, um, I, you know, I eight point five. I mean, yeah, I mean that's fair. Again, it's and 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 the, I think part of it is once you get used to it, just kind of like with standing up a standing up a VSC. You know, if you've done it a hundred times, you know, you're like, oh, I can spin up a VSC faster than I can do anything else. Well, because that's what you're used to. So I think, I think for that, you know. I'm going to give it an 8.5. The reason why I will knock it down a little bit is because of the one thing that it's kind of missing that people are expecting nowadays is the mobile app, which we can now talk about a little bit more because the other competitors in this round each have a mobile app and the VSC doesn't, which from a security perspective, I can see why not, but it does limit your ability to interface and use the the platform. So I would give the VSC an 8.5 on this one. No, that's fair. Which then leads us to R1. Out right, of the black corner. <laughs> right out of the gate. I honestly feel like R1 lands at about a nine. And, and the reason for this, I have a couple of reasons. Number one, it's the newest skinned platform we have, right? It's, it's, you know, less than a year old. It's still got the new car smell. Um, I, I think you can tell that they've put a lot of effort into making the user interface. I don't want to, very nice as the, is the, the, the most generic way I can put it. The other thing I'm going to get into, and, and I'll let you have the, the web app side of it. Um, the other thing that I like about R1 and part of the reason why I put it here is because with, we have a lot of nice products. And yes, we're biased. It's a Ruckus podcast. Oh, well. But we have a lot of nice platforms. You've got CloudPath. You've got Ruckus Analytics, which is now rebranded AI, to name a couple. And the, one of the goals with R1 is to get them all in basically a single pane of glass. To, to do that with the VSZ, I'm logging into separate web instances of CloudPath and our AI and of the controller. And I've got three tabs in the web browser opener. I've got three screens on my monitor, whatever the case may be, side by side. Ruckus One ties them all together and makes it a more seamless uh, experience for the end user. And I, I give them that extra bump for that. I think that's just, and we've I've heard enough customers looking for that, that that kind of tipped it a little bit. So I think it's, that's where I'm going with that. I think that's, that's, how I feel about Ruckus One. So 9.5? I went with nine, but if you want to give it a 9.5. So I got to I give, I give extra credit to Ruckus One because one, it is a very slick looking new interface. The way they built the menus down the left-hand side, I think really bumps it up. The fact that it's now all sort of all in one and it has the mobile UI, the, the app that you can put on your phone that you can then, you know, you're not going to be, doing day-to-day -day configuration on your phone. But if you're, if you are walking around, if you're at lunch and somebody gives you, and you get this call saying, Hey, there's a problem. The, you, the mobile app gives you just enough information. You can do a, you can do a quick check and you'd be like, Oh no, that AP is up and running in their area. And there's five clients connected to it. So if he's having a problem, it's more than likely his client device. And so for that, you know, sort of the ease of use, the, the user interface and for that, uh, you know, Nine nine point five. It's it's ruckus. One is getting hard to beat. No, I mean, that's so. fair. Which leaves us unleashed, 
And how I will say this about Unleashed, I'm going to give it like a five. It's a no frills interface. I'm not saying they don't put a lot of effort into it. I'm not, I don't want to be disparaging to the, the, the developers. It's, it does what it needs to do. It's not going to win any beauty contests. It's not designed to, I mean, again, no cost, right? So it's no frills. It works. It's clean enough. It's navigable. It does have a mobile app, which I did use, which did help me, um, which I'll let you kind of get into more. But I would say of the three, it's not the bell of the ball. It's not going to win this one. It's just, it can't. Um, it's it's not intended to. It, it's I think it's basically built to be, to be I don't want to call it basic. It's definitely more than basic, but it's, it's purpose built and that's it. It's not going to win the beauty contest. It's not. And, you know, and I think, whereas in the last round where, where Unleashed was punching well above its weight based on nerd knobs and features and stuff like that, when we compare it to say a TP link or something else is, you know, for people running one or two APs, um, it's, it takes a hit on this regard because it is sort of a very utilitarian interface. Um, it has some of the, it doesn't have as much of the data and analytics as, as people are sort of expecting, but for what it is and what it does, I'm okay with it, but it does really kind of bring it, it drags it down a little bit. The mobile app um, is really cool. You can, you can actually, um, build a, a WLAN in the mobile app if you wanted to. Um, but it's more of a monitoring thing and you can look at, you can you know, even incorporate switches, which I think then brings it back up because yeah, you can have a switch on your Ruckus Unleashed network and you can see like, hey, which port is up, which port is down, stuff like that. You cannot do any configuration on the mobile app for a switch, which then sort of pumps it down again. So I'm kind of thinking like a, like a 5.5 or a six on this one. Yeah, I think that's fair. Which, which I, I, it's, you know, even if we, even if we say, hey, we're going to give it a six, the problem is, is the competitors in this round, in this round, are really hard to beat. I mean, you're going up against some really high end competition here. So we've gotten three rounds. Do we have a clear winner, or do we have to go to sudden death? So from a, from just a round count, we do have a winner, which is Ruckus One, believe it or not, which is kind of interesting because you and I are both primary virtual smart zone users so the fact that we rated ruckus one um you know is is from a from that perspective but when we look at the actual scores and we do a score you know across the scores we need to go to sudden death we like sudden death so with that i do like sudden death. let's so ring that bell one more death. time what are the terms of sudden death jim what do we have to do what are we what, what what's the parameters here sudden death is sudden death like you are your feet is being held to the fire i gotta stand up a network who are you picking who's your fighter which round are you which corner are you going with on this one? oh man i'm gonna have to bust out the it depends card it, i mean if we're talking about i've got a, a you know a, a projectile based weapon pressed to my head and i've got to get something working right now i might actually go unleashed I was in a pickle. I was in a customer's, I mean, literally in an anechoic chamber. I think that's how you call it. You know, uh, the yeah. Faraday cage. I had to get unleashed working. That was my only option and it saved my butt. Um, so I've, like I said, I've got a, a nice place in my, my, my fondness and my heart for Ruckus uh, Unleashed. Ruckus One's pretty solid and it's not going to take a lot to get it running. Um, if I've got a couple hours to get something stable and, and to really tune it in to, to do everything I want, I'd go with a smart zone, but in a pickle, I kind of think I'm going unleashed. Unfortunately, I, again, it's the, it depends, right? <laughs> if I don't have a internet connection, you know, if I'm, if I'm trying to stand something up, you know, and I'm like, I don't, I just need an, I need a, an SSID being broadcast to connect back to something else, then I'm going to go with unleashed. But if I have an internet connection, I'm going with ruckus one. And, you know, the, with the amount of people that think that Wi-Fi means internet, I got to go with Ruckus 1 in this one. <laughs> so I would rank it. I'd rank Ruckus 1 as number one. My first choice, Unleashed, would be my second choice. And the Smart Zone is my third choice. Now, if we flip that and we say, hey, you get to pick, you have all the time in the world, 
and you have no budget and you get to- smartphone I, every day. There you go. So do we have a winner, John? I, I kind of feel like Ruckus One is is if it's not there, it's very close. And you've got the scorecard. I can see Italian up the points. <laughs> I mean, I think at the end of the day, I'll, I'll put it this way, and this is going to be so cheesy, and it's going to be so Homer, but I think if you're the customer, there's one controller platform. There's not one. This is not like Lord of the Rings. There's not one controller platform to rule them all. But the beauty part is you've got three flavors of controllers that can do anything you need based on your particular needs at that point in time. And as we've covered on the unsung features of the ruckus world uh, uh series we just released a couple weeks ago all of these ap's can run all of the code all of these ap's can work on any one of those platforms so if you are blessed with the luxury of time you can run it on a vsc if you need to convert it to ruckus one or unleashed you can do that too so i think the winner is the customer to really be the cheese ball here. Um, uh, so I had to do that. I really, I really had, I had to do that. Okay. Um, but, but, but it's true. I mean, at the end of the day, I can buy a pallet of ruckus APs and run it on any one of those three platforms based on what my needs are at that point in time for that project. And you will, and you're not going to be disappointed. No. And, and ultimately the other part of it too, is you can graduate, right? If you buy, whether it's your home lab or you, st- hey, let me say I'm a doctor. I start as a small business and, and which is not uncommon. You can have a ruckus deployment, which is three APs and you get really, really good at your job and you go from one office to three to five to 500 and you go unleashed isn't cutting it anymore. Ruckus one, I'd rather do my own thing. I'm going to graduate to a VSC. It can grow with you. That's pretty cool. So that's, that's where I'm at with that. I think, I think, uh, Customers win, but I think Ruckus won. Like I said, watch, keep watching for Ruckus won. This is going to be really, really big um, coming up. I think it's, it's fun, growing. You know, the funny the funny thing is, is if we do this 12 months ago, I think Smart Zone wins. Oh, absolutely. And so, But Ruckus so, won didn't exist, or we couldn't publicly speak about it uh, 12 months ago. So but, that's... Um, from the points, from the rounds, from everything, Ruckus won is the winner. No offense to Trey and to um, Vincent too. Uh, Dave Burns and Rajiv Iyer and and Sarab Mather and the team, you guys win this one. There you go. And again, can't go wrong with any of them. But uh, that was fun. Yeah, actually, that was that was that was more fun than I was expecting. I actually, uh, cool. Um, I think that kind of speaking of fun and winning. Oh, there you go. I was gonna say that was a nice segue. I was like, where's he going with this? Because I'm wrapping it up. What do you got for us, Palmer? The Wi-Fi Awards. That's true. They're being, they're announced. They are announced as of um, November 30th and voting started on the 1st of December. And our podcast, our little humble conversations here is actually a finalist for the content. I'm just abusing that button today. I really am. That's all good. But it's Um, for good reason. and so um, we would appreciate if you feel like we have contributed to, you know, your, your education, your understanding, your anything, please go vote for us. Uh, we'll have a link in the show notes and um, we'd appreciate your vote. And there, there's actually one other ruckus related vote for that particular award, isn't there? There is. The R770 is... Um, a finalist for the Innovation of the Year Award. So I'll give it a little cheer again. Yeah, but you got to mostly the vote for the podcast. <clears throat> well, if you're there, you yeah, know, exactly. You, you got to vote for both because, of them. Well, we do have an episode on the R770. That's so. true. We'll link to that in the show it's, notes too. It's all tied together. It is. So. It is. It's serendipitous. So on that note, we good. Yep. All right. Well, congrats That's to the the R1 team for for given us another really, really good product. Congrats to the R770 folks for getting nominated. Congrats to you, Mr. Palmer, for being and on the podcast that gets the nominee. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, and on that note, ladies and gentlemen, our fine audience, we will catch you again on the uh, next episode. Let me just find the outro. Have a good one. Thanks. Or directly, you can email us using the address ruckcast at comscope.com. To learn more about Ruckus products and services that we may have talked about on this or any other podcast, 
please check the links in the about section of the show.